Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo for 2014, our penultimate stop of the Season 8 tournaments. Of course, StarCraft 2 today. We've already seen two very interesting matches, but let's be facing it. Very one-sided game. So let's take a look at the bracket and show you the results from our first couple of games in Group A. Uh, earlier on, of course, we saw Jack G going through against WM from Brazil, and then Puck from America going down 2-0 from Bomber from Red Bull. Sejam bem-vindos de volta. Já tivemos dois confrontos. Foram um pouco de um lado só, mas agora a gente tem o confronto entre os vencedores. Quem ganhar daí está classificado. Vocês podem acompanhar na tabela. Ok, uh, we're now going to get into our winners game. This is, of course, dual format, uh, dual tournament format for the Intel Extreme Masters Sao Paulo. So that means it's time for our winners match, our two finalists in this winners match to decide the first player through to the quarterfinals here are two big names in StarCraft II. The first man is a Korean Terran. He's already played one game today and one through against WM in straightforward fashion, but I have a feeling this one might be a bit more difficult. He is from My Insanity and he is Jack G. He goes head to head with a fellow Korean, also a fellow champion Korean as well, the champion of WCS season two globally, no less, and ranked inside the top 16 of the world last year in 2013. From Red Bull, he is Bomber. Aí. Então, é, o formato de, da GSL, os dois vencedores se enfrentam. Quem passar daí consegue a classificação para o dia final. Quem perder vai precisar correr atrás. São os dois jogadores que foram apresentados. O primeiro é o Jack, jogador coreano, que fez uma primeira vitória muito fácil aí em cima do WM. E o segundo jogador, ele foi campeão da Season 2 da WCS, é o Bomba. Ok, and now it's time to go over to our commentary team in both Portuguese and English. Take it away, guys. Thanks very much, guys. Welcome back to the captain's desk for what is sure to be a very cool series. It's going to be Bomber versus Jackchi. I've been looking forward to this. Yeah, everybody's been looking forward to this in Group A. It's the match that everybody was expecting to see. You know, mm. Startel Bomber, or should I say Bomber, sorry, sponsored by Red Bull, going up against Jackchi from My Insanity. And these two players, favorites to say definitely top eight. Yeah. pushing top four in this tournament. Two fantastic Terran players going head-to-head -head now for a difference in prize money, for a difference already going straight to the playoffs. The winner of this would guarantee themselves $1,000 and the opportunity to win even more in the playoffs, that playoffs being top eight, of course. Which one do you think is going to win this one? I think it could go either way, but I would love to see uh, Jack G employ some kind of mech styles. If he does, maybe we'll see Jack G actually be able to take this, but it's going to be so close. I mean, both these players have the highest, highest caliber. And as you mentioned before, you know, there's a thousand dollars guaranteed there. Yep. Also guaranteed 250 WCS points. So yep. the person that places, well, technically for a little while, will be number one in WCS ranking. <laughs> Up until somebody wins his turn. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Bomber would take that jump start. And there he is. Of course, Bomber, fantastic set of years in StarCraft II. Played from the beginning, really, and has been one of the strongest Terrans from the beginning of StarCraft II throughout the last couple of years. Winning a Code A tournament in 2011, traveling abroad, competing at all those MLGs. Yeah. Um, 2012, though, we, we saw a bit of a weakness from Bomber. He was always a bit hit or miss where he got his inconsistency problems. You know, his consistency exactly. problems come out and really shine through where he would do well in one tournament, then bad in another. But 2013 has been a great year for him, just continually getting stronger and stronger and stronger. But Jack G, you know, was also there from the beginning in StarCraft II over the last three or four years, has been playing pretty damn well. You know, winning Code S in 2011, had a week of 2012, just like Bomber did, but in 2013, we mentioned it earlier, having a sixth place finish in the Premier League in South Korea in season three. A third place finish at Home Story Cup as well. But now in 2014, who is gonna really jumpstart their year here, their next set of tournaments in a row? Bomber, this is uh, no doubt the strongest or hardest match, should we say, for both of these players in this oh, group. Yeah, in group A. And apparently, in those booths, it's very cold. So lucky those guys. Lucky, lucky those, those guys. guys. It's super hot here in Sao Paulo. Yeah. It is 
bloody hot. It really is. Uh, maybe some people saw a cast of comic of uh, our little excursion out here, which is completely true. If I could use an umbrella, I would, but I'd look like a goof. So that's probably <laughs> not the best idea. <laughs> And just like every other game in this group, it is going to be a best of three. The first player to get two wins and is through in first place in Group 8, which is the top eight. Is it going to be the Red Bull player here recently announcing his full-time sponsorship, personal sponsorship from them? Or the Swiss team here, My Insanity. The team, actually, My Insanity, has been around for a long time, starting their StarCraft division in, I think it was 2011 or so in the last year have shot to success when it comes to their players. Stardust, yeah. Jack G, recently Kane, a fantastic set of players that they have. And Red Bull sponsoring two main players, still covering the Startel team, but sponsoring two main players, of course, Bomber and Life. And it looks like this game is now ready, Claris. All right, then. Well, countdown begins for game number one here between Bomber and Jack G. As you mentioned, My Insanity doing so, so well as of late. Jack G is a player here that has, you know, burst back onto the scene with a lot of vigor. And this is going to be an interesting one. Heavy Rain will be our first map between Bomber and Jack G. Who will advance on as the first player to the top eight here at the Intel Extreme Masters? Regardless, both of them are looking for at least a top two finish so that they can guarantee themselves a spot at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice. That's right, the goal, the end goal here for both players to get that finals here, top two. Style-wise, of course, we have Jack Ju plays a super regular play style, just the most common builds, the common strategies he uses, where Bomber is very aggressive. We saw in his games against Puck just now, hyper-aggression, but backed up with some fantastic scouting, figuring out exactly what his opponent was doing at all minutes throughout the game. And here we are. All right, well, spawning down to the south here as the Blue Terran. Representing Red Bull, he is Bomber. And up to the north as the Red Terran, representing my insanity, it's Jack G. And in recent times, we are seeing more and more of mechanical strategies and units being used in this matchup. And are we going to see mech play here today? Both of these players not really known for doing that, though, even though it is becoming more and more common in the matchup. Both of these players are usually players who like to play bio, and marines and tanks, and bio mech, should we say. Bio tank. I mean, heavy rain here, though, is a it's an okay map for playing mech on. Yep. You know, it's yep. small, it's confined, there's a lot of narrow pathways to you know, extract a lot of value from splash damage units. But I think one of the most interesting parts of TVT to set up the game is always the early stages. We are now going to see two different builds interact against each other, with Bomb already taking a gas first here, and then we'll be looking to take his barracks immediately next. He is going to be playing aggressive from the get-go here with the gas first before the barracks. He's able to get that factory down immediately here yeah. to start being aggressive. Whereas on the other side of things, Jackie with a little bit of a later guess after the barracks there. And now, I mean, from Bomber's side of things, you do mention that, you know, he gets that factory very quickly. Uh, there are options from a gas first here for a t in TVT, right? So I'll say that again? There are options uh, as gas first from TVT. Yeah. So I, mean, you... I mean, he's probably with gas first is most likely just going up to a club Banshees yeah. or Banshees at least. But look at this. Jack G straight away just throws down wow. double barracks no matter what here. So he's going to be playing quite aggressive with these double barracks. This is faster aggression, but not as hard hitting as the aggression the bomb would be going for with the factory down a bit of a higher tech aggression. But with these double barracks here, is Jack G going to break the inner shell of Bomber straight away in this game before he can even get ready to uh, aim towards his proper goal here? Certainly. With the factory down faster, he's going to have access to Hellions a little bit earlier on in this game, and Hellions are going to be able to push this away. But let's see how Bomber's going to do this. Remember, Bomber hasn't scouted all. He has absolutely no idea what Jack G's doing in this game. Uh, he's sending his STV over there for a second, stops in the middle of the map, and does end up now moving forwards. Maybe he's looking to just time out the STV and the uh, Reaper getting there at the right time so that if he sees an opportunity, he could throw a bunker down. But that would be very, very difficult to do here uh, in TVT. Oh. Well... 
And first Reaper's going to enter here. We need to see a Hellion made immediately. But of course, he's trying to go for the double gas. He's trying to throw in the starport. Doesn't have enough resources, but we have two Marines here. And he is doing a bit of damage, but remember the Reaper will generate. The SUV is gone. Yeah, it adds a little bit of firepower to that uh, small comp that he had there. Yeah. Extra Reapers are now on the way, so he's going to have three in total. Yeah, but look at this. Jack G's already ah. stopped producing Reapers. Yeah. He doesn't, he, he's realized that it's not going to work too too well here with the factory already down. Hellions are going to be out quite fast with three Marines and a Hellion. He'd push back quite a few Reapers. There are three of them, though. If any damage can be dealt, he has to find an area. He cannot just engage this army. Yeah, and uh, Bomber's positioning himself well to receive the Reapers on the left-hand side, but unfortunately he leaves his right flank completely wide open. The Reapers do get one kill, and they're going to dive straight back on out of there. Oh, but, one oh. Reaper's gone. Yeah, careful, careful. And it does get a Marine in the end, so he's being very, very ca uh, cautious about actually being able to pull those back. They were so close to actually dying off. Uh, Great control from Bomber. Yeah. Really good control from Bomber there. But uh, Jack G is not finished yet. He's going to come in again. Now trying to move in from the left. Yeah, Looks this like is not going to work here. Yeah, Bomber, with those Hellions, I mean, you were talking about it earlier. Just getting those Hellions out, it makes it a whole lot harder for those Reapers really to do anything. Yeah, and uh, it stopped nice and early without really too much damage dealt there from Jack Sheen. Bomber's initial build here, which is always aimed towards Cloak Banshees, is now in full swing. He has the first Banshee about to pop out and Cloak on the way. And he'll be looking to get damage done himself. And Jack Sheen knows this is coming, obviously, through being in the base all the time with his Reapers. He needs to set up a defense. Bomber, though, remember, he hasn't really scouted anything properly in this game, but through process of elimination, knowing that his opponent had two barracks and has seen that he is going for his club Banshees, he can almost identify what he should have, and that is a defense. But is it ready? The Raven, I suppose, is going to be the first unit built from Jack G here to prepare for this. And he should be able to greet it all right. Meanwhile, though, Bomber, he's actually adding on siege tanks much, much quicker here than any command center or anything. So yep. he's looking to put on quite a bit of pressure yep. here. He's, he's going to slow his opponent down and then come up with a, a follow-up attack here to contain Jack G yeah. and then expand behind it. He will look to expand from this, but okay, Jack G here is taking a lot of damage already. Got to be careful. Losing those Marines to these, this Banshee can be devastating. Oh. And that scan doesn't really get much done. That's, uh, that's not ideal here. And Jack G needs to deal with this. The Raven's almost about to pop out. But remember, every Marine he loses is defense that isn't going to be there yeah. for the next attack, Unit which counts. will consist of the tanks, as you said. Whoop. And he does get it in the end, but yeah. the Raven was about to pop anyway. So, But yeah, that was quite expensive. Quite an expensive uh, defense there for Jack G. We have Bomber now taking his expansion as well, whilst looking to move out with two siege tanks. So this army that he's built himself here is very, very strong indeed. Yeah. But Jack G should have the air advantage of uh, Viking numbers. Yeah, he should have a tank on the high ground and then the air advantage with the Viking pops out, which should be okay to push this back or at least not let it get into perfect position. But with the Banshee here, that's the difficult thing. He just needs to make sure he can get rid of it. Yeah, and he's trying to kill off a few more Marines where he can. And actually forcing out the auto turret from Jack G there is a big deal when it comes to this kind of attack. Because normally you would like that auto turret maybe to soak up a little bit of damage whilst going for the defense. All right, well, the Viking's out, and the Banshee is going to try and get away here. But remember, Bomber is at the front door. Yes, he is. He's knocking pretty loudly as Jack G. He has to be very, very careful. One siege tank on the high ground. Should be able to shell away at some of these on the low ground. But he drops the scan, trying to bring that oh. down. Siege tank on the high ground. Very nicely done out there by Bomber. And all the SCVs are forced to retreat out right now. There's actually no units out here for Jack G. He has one Reaper and one Viking. Yeah, that tank was so important. He was meant to keep that alive there. But a fantastic scan from Bomber. And now he's got a perfect container over his opponent. And SCVs oh. will have to be pulled to deal with this. Jack G in a lot of trouble. He loses a lot of SCVs in the oh. process as well. Six have already it's fallen. With a no tank, this is it's almost checkmate from Bomber. A yeah. brilliant move out here. The Banshees did a lot of damage. That scan onto the tank on the high ground. Jack G thought he was safe. He thought he had air control. He thought that Bomber couldn't see up the ramp, which he wasn't going to without a scan. And now with three tanks here. Uh, Another Banshee coming across the map, and then Bomber B mining on his natural. Great move. Yeah, really well executed aggression here from Bomber, just break, drawing out these last few moments to kill off plenty of SCVs. GG, Bomber will take game number one, and looking pretty darn strong. Bomber separating himself from the entire Group A so far today. Yeah. Just looking class above the rest.
And you know, in TVT, I see this push come out time and time again. This two siege tank push out before the command center. And unless you are thoroughly prepared for yeah. it, uh, it is very difficult to hold off. And the Banshee, just before, really added that horrible, horrible wrench uh, in the works of Jen Jackie there just, that he just couldn't deal with. Well, Jackie took a risk in the, in the beginning of this game, trying to go for the two Rax Reapers like this that really didn't gain him anything. So he invested into it. He didn't come out majorly far behind, but he didn't really gain anything from that type of build, and you really do want to. And then Bomber, with his counter Banshee, or initial Banshee strategy that he had going anyway, and then the follow-up of the tanks was just too much for Jackie to hold on to. Scary stuff, really scary stuff there, as Bomber takes that lead. And now, second map will be Ultrazine Stronghold, which is a map that should probably flow much more differently than Heavy Rain. It's so difficult to make earlier aggression work on this map, yep. so I won't be surprised to see that macro focus. Yeah, um, we definitely could see some uh, some of these players, or two of these players, going for a command center first, as it is a large map harder to pull off aggression. But I wouldn't also be surprised if somebody still went gas first here. Mm. You know, with the Banshee being able to get in against a command center first, you're usually able to get a lot of damage done to pull your economy in the lead. Not too heavy investment, for example, Bomber, if he was to go the same again, I probably wouldn't go for the tanks, just the Banshees into an expansion. Yeah, yeah. But uh, anything possible here. I like your breakdown of that. I think, you know, the, the Banshees into expansion. You know, try and do a little bit where you can. Not focus on the Marine numbers to try and make a, a secondary push, obviously, work on. But try and get to some SCVs where you can uh, and then macro off the back of that. I would like to see that from Bomber. Uh, but likewise, we might even see Jack do that. Who knows? Uh, going into this game. and. I gotta say, you know, have, having TVTs uh, of this caliber play out, you know, between people like Jackie and Bomber, it's it's normally a treat to watch. I mean, the way in which you saw Bomber execute that build is like so staple, so good. Copy that, and you'll do really well in TVT. Yeah, it's uh, quite an easy build to pull off, really. Yeah, it just depends on how much you know damage you can get done with the Banshees, more so than to nail the build. But the next map, as you say, Alpha Seam Stronghold. And we'll see what strategy choices these players are going to go for here. It's a map we haven't really seen a whole lot of as of late, or, or even you know since its introduction, but it is slowly working its way in. Uh, as we've rightly pointed out before, you know there is a big, big macro focus on it, um, but we haven't really seen anybody even try too much difference, uh, different things in terms of the macro. So we could quite easily be surprised on Altrazine Stronghold by somebody if they come with a you know a fresh mindset, something a little bit more quirky. But it can be it can be really difficult to make those earlier attacks work so so who, do you think that Jack is gonna get this or not I would like to see a 1-1 um, I would love to see three games I mean uh, when it comes to these guys who are at the top at the top level of this group let's be honest um, first with Jack G and bomber they're, mm. they're both looking to advance on both looking to uh, move on to the grand final because if they do advance on then they can't meet each other until the final so yeah if they're the two best here, then that could happen. All right, Jack G taking a swig of water before he enters the next game. We're about to load into this one. He cracks his fingers and prepares for this. Is he going to be a tie up? Is he going to be able to tie this up? He would certainly hope so. He would certainly hope so. A nice and easy day off immediately. <laughs> Win <laughs> yeah. this game, go home, go to the hotel, get out the warmth and uh, relax, but we'll see. I think both of these players are favorites to advance no matter what. But of course, Puck could be a, a difficult player to play against again. Yeah, he showed some good chops against Bomber, uh, but in the end, kind of got a little bit run over. But anyway, now spawning up to the top as our Blue Terran representing Red Bull, currently one game up, he is Bomber. And down to the south, we have our Red Terran representing my insanity. He needs to bring this back. He is Jack G. Yeah, I will agree with what you said. This 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 should be a more macro focused map, uh, more macro focused strategy. So, command center first being a, a likelihood here. Maybe Reaper expand, uh, because if you you always have to think about what is what is my opponent going to do. Yeah. Because if my opponent does go command center first, can I get damage done with a Reaper opening? Uh huh. But I don't think Command Center First is as popular as it should be on a map this big. It, it, when you think about the map size and stuff, because there are builds that beat it when it comes to a Reaper play could wear down the SCVs and then an expansion could maybe overtake. 
maybe a gas first could get damage done with a banshee here but it looks like as we can see both players going over the 12 supply mark which is where you throw the barracks down both of them will play to the map size they won't try to capitalize on each other yeah they will just play to it and from this position options are endless they really are it's a gentlemanly agreement even if you were like try and put on some aggression then you have to send out an yep. scv to scout you lose so much mining time trawling around yep. the map it's a really really horrible position yep. to be in if you don't get anything done with it but even though you i mean we can see that both the players have opened up like this but obviously they don't know that that's what's happened here They've, they haven't scouted or anything here so what we should be expecting to see i'd imagine is the barracks and then straight into a gas pretty fast yeah and then they'd be aiming towards uh, the factory again because you can't just write out the, the option that they haven't gone for, you know, a Banshee, for example. And the only way to deal with a Banshee is to have a Viking out, to use the Starport defensively for yourself. You cannot really play with a couple of barracks and really speed up your economy and your army size because you would get stung by a Banshee. So I'd, ex I'd be expecting both these players to shoot up to a factory quite fast. Yeah, and as you've you know rightly pointed out, the gases are now on the way. They're finished up and good to go. Uh, and with that, they'll be accelerating on forward. So now, interestingly enough, Jack G really wants to know what his opponent's up to, really wants to know at least where he's spawned. Uh, yeah, that's the most important part. Where is he spawned? Yeah. You, at, this, at this time in the game, you can't find out what he's doing, but where he's spawned and he's gonna know where he spawned but unfortunately not what he's doing because that marine's gonna pop out and should be able to deny yeah. the scout. And Bomber has the same uh, thought process too. They yeah. just need to know where the other player is All because right. where to expect the potential attack to come from. You know, just On a four-player map you need to know where he is. And one thing that I normally see on this map more so than uh, other maps in TBT is uh, if it gets into the later stages is a real abundance of sensor towers because it's so big if your army's way out of position yeah, yeah. you really need to know what's going on uh, so that is something that does come into play a little bit more on ultrazim stronghold than others i wonder if any of these players are going to play a little bit greedy here whether they are going to try to take a fast third base or not in this game obviously a lot easier especially when they find out that they're cross positions to play that style but Wait. jack g's going to enter the main base here and he's getting more information than I expected him to. I've got to admit, those Marines were positioned for a Banshee assault, uh, not for anything else. And, well, yeah. he sees what he needs to see. He knows his opponent's gone for the command center without going down to the natural. Yeah, and Jack G is going to be able to deny information. So Jack G, I'd say, you know, obviously has a little bit of an edge, not a massive one, uh, not, not game changing, but he does know where his opponent is and what he was kind of up to. And there is that third command center I thought we might see here. And Bomber did see it. Bomber knows his opponent's playing pretty greedy here. I, I suppose that he could think that's the second command center and could be expecting quite a lot of aggression as well. So it's either one or the other. The Jack G's playing quite aggressive here or he's playing really greedy. There's nowhere in between that you can have a yeah. command center at this time. So Bomber, it really depends on how he's going to read this. Does he read that as greed? Does he read it as he could be attacked soon? And that's the power of the denial of the scout, right? Yeah. Uh, that's really, really hard. He's building an engineering bay really fast, so yeah. he, he actually doesn't quite know exactly what that means. Because it is at the same time where if a cult banshee had come first, the command center could have been placed down as well. So Bomber, a little bit in the dark, and you, you said it there, the power of scouting. Jack G got an edge. Bombers will be falling a little bit high because he doesn't know exactly what he's going up against. Exactly. He has to commit to a middle of the road. Yeah. Because compared to, you know, a third command center being seen or the first one, uh, you know, actually being planted down, there's huge differences in what Bomber would ideally like to do, yeah. but he has to now have a bunker at the front. That uh, com uh, evolution uh, engineering bay yeah. has finished up. And so Jack G's just full yeah. steam ahead. Three, three command centers, double engineering bay, as greedy as you can get. Yeah. Where Bomber has no idea this is going on, naturally Jack G goes into an advantage. But the longer this game goes on, the, the, uh, the obviously if the Banshee isn't coming or any aggression isn't coming, then he's going to know that it's not that. So he can turn his defensive play into an aggressive one, which we will see with the medivac. And Jack G did scan and see his opponent setting up rather defensively or at least not super greedy or anything here. Yeah. But can Bomber get some damage done? Because if he can get some damage done with this medivac, then absolutely he's back in the running here. If not, then Jack G's going to start to run away with this game a little bit. Jack G already has Marines positioned as well as even Marauders just to greet this once it does land on. So Jack G with that full, full bio focus, whilst we have also Bomber adding on plenty of barracks as well, has to fly away probably, but he actually gets a chance to burrow that Widow Mine and does end up dying oh. off, but it also gets a connection. That does a lot of damage to those Marines and this will be a bit better here for Bomber. Yeah, that wasn't meant to go off there. And no. that's a great move here for Bomber. A nice, nice play.
Very, very well done. He's got a few work kills as well, denying also the mining time at this location. And he's forced to drop another scan if he wants to clean up this Widowman, but he gets picked up. He may end up retreating out, but he actually burrows it again and then burrows... Wait, what? Uh... <laughs> But it gets one or two worker kills in Excellent the end. Excellent micro here. This is this is such a beautiful move with so few units here. And he's managed to kill off 13 SCVs. Two scans were forced. A lot of lack of yeah. mining time. A bomber's command center's finished. He's got a double engineering bay of his own. He's perfectly back into the game. And that was what's needed from the Startail player. I mean, the Red Bull player. Always see Startail just runs off. It does. Having it really in, does. He's been in Startail since the beginning of time, or was in Startail since the beginning of yeah. time in StarCraft 2. It, there's a big change there, but is a there, perfect play from Bomber. That was absolutely beautiful. Is there any specific reason he was unburrowing and burrowing? Is it because he wanted to make sure it didn't go off at yeah. like a weird time? Yeah, yeah. He wants to perfectly time when it goes yeah, off. Yeah, very nice. Not just let it be wasted on extracting as much value as possible. And as you can see, Bomber's, you know, he's not too far behind at all here in this position. God, he's got so many barracks in comparison to Jackie right now. So we're going to see Bomber's macro absolutely fly away very soon. And he's killed off 13 workers. He's currently sat at 56 against 47. But now it's Jackie's turn. How much damage can he get done at his opponent's natural that's already turned it up? Yeah, but as a Terran player, when you're about to take your third base, you've got to start to be prepared to be dropped because all your units will be on the front to defend it in case a big attack comes. But that leaves the back of you weak. So there we actually see Bomber throwing down turrets on his natural. I mean, not on his natural. Yeah, well, it is his natural. His back mm -hmm. base there. But are these medivacs going to boost past there and get damage done? There's not that many units that close. Well, Paul Marine ends up running to his death, realizing that there is now a widow mine there. And these two medivacs realize they can't get too much done at that second base. So good defense so far from Bomber. He's really crossing all the T's and dotting all the I's. As he's, he's played out this game really nicely so far. Yeah, really, really nicely. And as you can see, this game, I would say just a little bit in favor of Bomber, but hard, hardly anything in it at this moment. With the upgrades so similar, SCV counts similar once again, as Jackie was mining a little bit faster on that third. And let's have a look. Does Bomber actually, where's his factory? Mm. Okay, it's floating. So he's actually going to play a fully bio wow. style. He's not going to use tanks at all in this game, which means he's going to be a lot more active. He's going to be very control-centric in the middle of a large open map. We'll be looking to catch his opponent out of position, where Jack G in straight-up fights here with tanks being made in the second factory so he can increase the tank count, is definitely going to be better in heads-up fights that he is prepared for. Anything that he isn't, but the tanks are useless, virtually, so... Well, I mean, I, I love the full bio style on this map in general because there's so much area in engagement locations to just spray down straight across and get massive concave. So it's really cool to watch. And look at Bomber. A Marine at the north here will spot a medivac. He's got no defense in his main base, but with that single Marine there, perfect positioning, defense positioning, and should be inside his main base in time to deal with this. Yeah, very, very well done here by Bomber. Really covering all the angles he needs to. And now he's got so many Marines in production at any time. And these, <laughs> these Marines are going to just shoot on this drop away. Jackie right now, though, pushing through the middle with his tanks well, as well. Jackie also doesn't know that he's playing against this only Marine mm. style or only bio style. So if he, if he tries to take a position on a player that also has tanks, yes, that's okay. Because usually on the same that kind of unit count, great scan there from Jackie, mm. identifying, wait a minute, there are no tanks. He already had decided to pull back. He did spot the fourth command center of his opponent as well, but Jackie knows that he's playing against a player who is going to be very aggressive in the, in the middle of the map here, looking to catch him out of position. But look at the supply counts. Bomber's macro phenomenal. He's, you know, 200 supply capability, already at 189, 91. He's oh. flying ahead, 94 Marines Jeez. and 10 medivacs. That's a very, very scary army for his opponent to go up against, especially since he's getting his plus three weapons very, very quickly. Yeah. Jackie's going to have to play this so defensively but for a while. He can tuck tight on his third, but his main is very exposed. Sensor yeah. towers are going to help out a lot. There's no defense in his main here. I think it's going to be almost impossible for Bomber to break this third with so many tanks here. Yeah, it's a good defensive location. Bomber drops the scan, realizes he can't get a whole lot done. Yeah. Second scan as well there, as Jackie spots his opponent's army and realizes, well, it's time to hunker down. But it's going to be very hard for Jackie to move over the other map to slow Bomber down in any way. But yeah. Bomber's lifted up in the medivacs. It's the only way to get real damage done. Oh, oh. 
Is he going to get spotted? Because oh. if these units stim, he can catch it. Medivacs. He might be able to catch one of them. He stims up. He gets one of the one. medivacs. It all stim, uh, boosts oh, out of the way. Oh, they're going to go down the back, but there's a lot of turrets there. Bomber cannot break this, I don't think, without losing a lot of medivacs. Yeah, this, he has to be so careful about where he drops. He might try and go oh, for the... Oh, Jack G! He's actually oh. picked up units underneath the medivacs. Where is he going? Everything trying to chase down one another. How well is this going to work out for Bomber? Everything being dropped in exactly the same place. I'm not exactly sure how this is going to really work out, but at the same time, Bomber, with a lot oh, of these units, Jack all clocked up. Beautiful defense oh, there. Oh, oh. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful defense. All the Marines for Bomber also trying to penetrate oh. this third base. They're trying to get that command center. Will they be able to get it? He's actually repairing this as quickly as he possibly can do. Losing a lot of SCVs, but the army of Jackie trying to reinforce as well. Losing a lot of mining time here, but Bomber tries to push on through. He gets to the tanks. He's going to kill those off as well. The macro for Bomber, despite losing the army in the base, phenomenal. That was a beautiful defense in the main base, but the amount of units Bomber had, he come crushing through with another army. Oh my. Already ready to go. And Bomber has broken down Jackie's defense which is what he needed to focus on here. And wow. Bomber is flying ahead. So many Marines in production at a single cycle here. 15 Marines per cycle over and over and over again with a fourth command center ready to go. And all he needs to do now is just keep Jack G pinned back and Bomber is looking at a 2-0. Look at the supply difference. Yeah, he, uh, he's going to have 3-3 three, three finish before his opponent as well. Jack G is on the ropes after a very, very interesting few little moves there. It was really difficult to see that Bomber was going to be able to reinforce so strongly through to that third base and absolute power it out. But Jack G, oh, torn, torn apart. Yeah. And even if Jack G sits back, takes the third, tries to climb up in supply again, it's going to just allow Bomber to go crazy with his upgrades, can even switch into air. He can pretty much do anything. He has complete map control, take a four, yeah. take a fifth. Let's keep his economy flying. He's already starting to bank money now, being maxed out. 103 Marines. I mean, Jack actually can't Medivacs. pursue this army. He cannot he pursue this army. He can't move out. He has to stay home. Yeah. And that's Bomber's advantage. He can play like a Zerg player, just keep on expanding all over. It looks like he's trying to drop the main base here. And he can remember at this kind of level of economy Bomber has, throw away units. He can trade so off much. really poorly as long as he just keeps up. And look at this, a big drop now, but that in the middle of the map. This Beautiful is, by Bomber. This is cr Look at how well this is executed. No missile turrets here that all really exploiting is, the angles. This is checkmate, Claris, I feel. Absolutely. Killing off production facilities left and right. The Marines coming back to reinforce, but even if they come back to try and hold this off, as soon as they come back with this engagement, the third gets hit as well. The siege tanks have no place to stand, and now Bomber is actually just tearing apart all of these Marines. Too many medevacs for him to even contend with. Never mind the third base. GG and Bomber takes a 2-0 convincing beautifully played there on Altazim absolutely fantastic there from Bomber in the mid stages great strategy great setup great maneuvers great game yeah I mentioned I mean at the beginning that we see a lot of sensor towers on this map in TBT but in the grand scheme of things that didn't really matter yeah. Bomber looked for the best locations to drop I think even when he went into the main base and lost all of, a lot of his army there, it was still the best option yeah. of the, the third, the natural, and the main. Yeah, I mean, I underestimated it. Jack G underestimated what Bomber could do behind that. Scary. Just running through the middle of the map with so many Marines. Beautiful play from him. And Bomber now guaranteed top eight at least at the Intel Extreme Masters here, live from Sao Paulo. Guarantees himself at least $1,000 at least. 250 WCS points and is now already in the single elimination quarterfinal bracket way. He would play his first game in the best of five. Oh, yeah. Beautiful play from Bomber. And Jack G now goes down to the final game of Group A and will be playing against the winner of Puck and WM. He was, uh, Bomber was denied that spot in the previous Intel Extreme Masters by Scarlet, but she's not here. <laughs> Bomber's nemesis is not here, guys. So Bomber. I don't know, man. He looks good. He He's looks really good. looking really good. And I think a lot of people came into this tournament thinking about one player alone. Of course, CJ Hero. Oh, yeah. MC's performing very well. we got Pult here, Jack G's here. But Bomber today showed that he is absolutely a contender for the throne here in the Tell Stream Masters, for sure. If we saw a Bomber versus CJ Hero finals, I would be very excited. But now, guys, that's going to do it for our second, our third series even of the day. Uh, join us after the break when we'll have more awesome StarCraft action from the Intel Extreme Masters.